Yep, I have it. Oh, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. See everybody's faces. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice Amazing. shift. Huh? Really? All right, we're ready. You guys ready? All right. Good afternoon. This is the Wednesday, June twenty third, twenty twenty one town council scarborough main town council workshop on the downs uh, traffic improvements and the traffic movement permit uh real quick we'll, we will do a quick roll call tom oh, for heaven's sake. No, i'm sorry Councilor gleistian here Councilor clucci here Councilor katarina here Councilor johnson yes uh Councilor anderson here. thank you <laughs> Councilor hamill here and Chairman Johnson. Yes, it, it's listed as an item. I had to do it. Okay. Uh, item number three is essentially our only item. It's broken into four subcategories. Number one is the overview of the traffic movement permit process. Jay, I think you're going to get us started. Is that correct? I have a PowerPoint. You and. Yeah, I have a PowerPoint. Yep. That will part, I think eight or 10 slides are from the Downs team, and then we follow with six or eight slides Perfect. from the uh, town. Any redundancies in there? Well, I'll skip over. <laughs> Chairman Johnson, I'd kick it off if uh, it's all right with you. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, do you want to start with a PowerPoint or? We'd like yep. to, yeah. Absolutely. We'll I'm just, let Let's me try to put it. I'm going to go to the podium yes. once he introduces it. But before, I'm going to pass out um, some graphics that help the council with this presentation. Take one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you better be. Thank you, sir. It's the first time we're in. Oh, I like this. Like this. Good job, Derek. My my height. This one's my yard. Sir. Let's go. Ah, okay, okay. So, okay. I'm told her to pick it on. This is big stuff. So to get started. First of all, thank you, uh, all all of you uh, members of the town council and the staff that are here tonight. Um, we're pretty excited to get a chance to to talk about. Uh, traffic in the downs and, and update the council on uh, on where we're at. Um, we have uh, Peter Michu, uh, Dan Bacon, and Tom Errico. Uh, Tom is our traffic consultant from TY Lynn here tonight. And hopefully we can answer questions. Um, we do have a presentation and then I, I think certainly there'll be some discussion. Starting out, uh, what you're seeing on the screen, uh, you've seen before, but it's it shows our site, the down site, um, and its proximity to a uh, terrific, you know, major road network. And uh, it's one of the things that uh, really helps us with the downs and will enable it to be developed out. The circles that you see are uh, walk rings, five minute walk rings. And it's, again, it's a slide you've seen uh, probably several times over the last few years, but we, we thought it was helpful to just kind of orient uh, everybody and, uh, you know, give you an idea of where we are with uh, a terrific major road, uh, roadway network. Um, who's advancing the slides? I am. There you go. Um, so we've been uh, working with uh, our consultants, with the town staff and their consultants, the state of Maine, for about two years on this traffic movement permit. Um, we're, we're really uh, excited to be, you know, at the at the finish line with getting a permit uh, approved. And uh, it's it's been quite a process. Uh, there's been a lot of work involved by all of the parties. Uh, lots of intersections looked at and studied. And uh, a lot, a lot has gone into this. The downs, as we've we've said in the beginning, the downs really uh, can be a catalyst for looking at and taking care of a lot of these traffic issues and figuring out how best to move traffic uh, through town. And part of the reason that that we're going to be able to make a lot of improvements here is because of the downs and, and the downs moving forward. So the traffic movement permit is, it's a TMP, just for the audience. Uh, when we say TMP, we mean traffic movement permit. It's required by the main DOT for new developments at the downs, uh, be, simply because of the size of the development and the number of trips that will be occurring over time. Uh, TMP mitigation includes uh, town impact fees, uh, town direct responsibilities, uh, existing issues, Proj our project impacts and longstanding town main DOT transportation corridor initiatives. So dovetailing those all together, uh, the TMP is unprecedented in its opportunity for comprehensive town-wide transportation improvements performed by the project, by the downs with local taxpayer, with, without local taxpayer funding or, or debt. So there's a lot of work that's gonna get done um, with the downs really uh, driving the bus on actually getting the work done, 
Uh, it's it's a you know it's a um, it's a unified effort, obviously, but uh, the Downs is ultimately responsible to get the work done. Project enables a three-year main DOT business partnership initi initiative. That's the BPI funding that we talk about. Because of the size of this project, the state will actually participate, and we'll get uh, you know we'll get money from the state on on making improvements. So that's a that's a that's a big deal, you know, for the citizens of the town to be able to get work done not on their uh, on their dime. Um, Total transportation program looks like around 14 million. You've seen a few different numbers, 13, 14 million. That's, that's today. Uh, by the time everything's done, I'm sure there'll be, will be creep on that, but uh, around 14 million. Um, the main DOT uh, BPI share would be 3 million of that. Um, we're looking for the town to participate in about 2.8 million. And that money is, um, impact fees that the town has collected from other development. It's not taxpayer money. Um, and then the project share uh, right now is looking at about $8.2 million that, that would cost uh, the Downs development team. Um, our key next step uh, is to proceed with the improvement plan. The town council, we need to get a, a memorandum uh, of agreement with the town council um, so that we can move forward and know that these monies are, are set aside. So Dan is gonna do a presentation and take you through some specifics, it, it's, it's a little bit high level and we can, then we can drill down and get into more detail if you want to uh, after the presentation's made, but Dan's gonna take it from here. Uh, thank you. And it's nice to be here in person. It's been a year and a half of Zoom, so it's great to be in uh, behind a podium in the, in the meeting room with you. So uh, thanks for all for advancing this slide. Before I dive into the TMP kind of improvements and in, in mitigation, I thought it was first important to talk a little bit about our design principles uh, with the project. Jay and Angela know this stuff the planning board does, but I know you're not as immersed in kind of the layout of the project. Um, so even before the TMP, we focused really hard on laying out the project uh, in a manner that really focuses on highway access. So the project isn't, impacting the road system as much as it otherwise would. Um, so to that end, we've located, you can see the downs, uh, the yellow outline or circle is exit 42 um, and I-95. And then the two red circles are our primary entrances really for like the light industrial commercial, the heavier traffic to go into and outside the project. Those driveways or new roadway intersections are located as close as possible uh, within the site to exit 42. So that was deliberate to, to promote um, highway use and easy in and out for a lot of the regional traffic that wants to visit the downs, particularly commercial light industrial traffic. Thought that was important for the council to understand. We've also laid out the project internally to really kind of play to those access points and to actually downplay the use of route one. Route one, everybody thinks of as like the downs main entrance. Um, when the project evolves further, it's really going to be the quieter entrance. It's more the residential side of the project, uh, again, so that more of the regional traffic goes to Haigas Parkway and to Payne Road. Haigas Parkway is built by Maine DOT to carry traffic, um, and we're utilizing that with our design. Another key piece uh, in the project is, is the internal layout. It's a complete streets project, so it's very walkable, bikeable. Um, so that benefits uh, the project in terms of minimizing traffic um, within the project and also external to the project. The mixed use piece of the downs is also uh, really key. Rather than a lot of things happening along Route 1, there's the opportunity for people to come to the site for multiple things or not necessarily leave the site because you may live there, you may work there, you may go there to work and then you may go to dinner after. You're not necessarily using the external road system. So the design of the project and how it's set up is really um, on its own helps minimize uh, traffic impacts. And then lastly, um, really kind of the layout and the density within the project provides a, a great opportunity for transit to be uh, more commonly used in Scarborough. So Scarborough historically has grown in a way that, that isn't um, really transit friendly, this project is. And so part of our mitigation you'll see actually is gonna be helping induce transit in Scarborough to, for the project, but also for the community in general. So I wanted to touch on those things. Um, in terms of 
the overall uh, approach to the TMP. Um, it's, it's a comprehensive approach um, and it's not piecemeal. Typically traffic movement permits, developments come in and apply for a traffic movement permit when they know the end user that's going in. It's sort of just based on uh, what's proposed at that time. Working with the town and DOT, we approach this differently where it's a long-term traffic permit. So uh, we actually applied for uh, approval for, for, for trips based on our five-year forecast of future development, not kind of reacting to tomorrow or the next day. Um, so this isn't typically done with DOT. It led to, as Rocky said, sort of a long permitting process, but it's one long permitting process that can, um, that can serve us in the town the next five to 10 years versus always applying once we know, hey, there's this end user, I'm gonna apply for a permit. So it's a bit unheard of, but we think it's served the project well and will serve the town well. So we're accommodating um, through this TMP, the build out, the future build out over the next five or greater year period. So that was important for the council to kind of understand. And the mitigation that we're doing that we'll talk briefly, we'll talk about in a few minutes, <clears throat> is all gonna be done in the first year, but excuse me, in the first five years, but really focused on the first three years. So the majority of the improvements we're gonna start making in 22, uh, 23 and 24. Um, and that will be before most of the substantial impacts of traffic of the project. So that'll happen upfront versus kind of reacting to traffic um, as the project builds out. As Rocky indicated, uh, this TMP includes mitigation, um, that really historically has been expected that the town would execute in many of these impact fee districts um, where there hasn't been adequate money quite yet built up to execute those. So instead the downs would um, partner with the town in executing those. It's also gonna execute mitigation that are really the project's impact and responsibilities. And then working with DOT in the town, um, the mitigation is really earmarked for some of those long-standing kind of corridor initiatives that that the town and DOT you know haven't tackled, and a project like of this size um, has the ability to working with DOT in the town. It's also a pretty modern approach to transportation. We're not just proposing to widen streets uh, that then just get filled up with cars. Um, it's sort of strategic uh, improvements for capacity, but also strategic improvements for um, bike and ped use and transit and most notably strategic in terms of uh, the corridor improvements that we're working with the town and DOT on relating to signal, signals, like optimizing the signal system on all the key corridors in town so that traffic's efficient um, and, and responsive to kind of the cars on the street. So that's a real key piece of this uh, proposal or this TMP. And so kind of lastly, and the point of this evening is kind of leading up to the partnership, you know, to, to execute uh, this bundle of improvements, it's critical to have the, the three-way partnership uh, with the downs kind of carrying uh, the majority of the cost, but also DOTs, BPI funding, and then the town's impact fee funding that hasn't been used yet on this corridors that it's earmarked for. So thanks, Paul. This is a, um, a map that's really hard to read, um, but what it's identifying is all the locations um, where improvements will be made. So with this TMP and transportation program, at least 30 intersections will be improved, um, some in, in substantial ways, some in, in uh, more minor ways. That's what all the kind of the dots represent. Um, and it really will impact and better uh, the key corridors in the community that everybody thinks of. The Route 1 corridor, the Payne Road corridor, including South Portland. So the Payne Road corridor, as everybody knows, turns into Main Mall Road. And it's, it's one regional corridor, not just you know, a, a jurisdictional corridor. So we're making improvements, working with both agencies along that entire corridor, all the way up to um, the Best Buy entrance or the Main Mall entrance um, on Main Mall Road. We're also working on signals at eight corners, um, Haigas Parkway improvements, and then even out into North Scarborough. So one of the bigger congestion problems in town um, is the 114-22 overlap. Um, the project really actually doesn't impact that area 
substantially, but it's a high need. So the project through this TMP process is going to be working with both agencies on improvements out there, um, which may actually benefit, you know, Gorham, Westbrook, other communities um, in a way as much as, as Scarborough. So in terms of some, uh, some more specifics, the, the map outlined uh, those 30 plus areas. Um, as I mentioned, there's a range of different types of improvements. So there's the auto focus capacity improvements. That's like more traditional, improve the signal, the intersection, add new signals, add turn lanes. So that's being done at what we call the downs front doors. So the Payne Road intersection with the Downs, a Route 1 intersection with Scrubber Downs Road, a new um, Haggis Parkway intersection that will, the Downs will, will uh, establish. Um, so those are kind of the front door improvements that are more customary with development. <laughs> We're also making significant improvements at Exit 42 Payne Road and Haggis Parkway, that key intersection at the interchange, um, the Payne Road corridor, we'll see um, pretty significant capacity improvements. So from exit 42 to the downs, but also down past Payne and Muzzy Road. Payne and Muzzy Road's been historically a, a high crash location, a challenging intersection. So that'll see significant improvements. There'll be a new signal there based on DOT requirements. That's been kind of a longstanding thing that hasn't um, been done by the town through its impact fees. And then also, a key connection from Haggis Parkway into the downtown. Last night we had a meeting about the downtown and that access point is kind of key for the town, key for uh, the project to activate that area. The next is these corridor improvements around signals and efficiency and safety. So I mentioned those corridors. Um, I don't need to kind of mention them again, but there's you know, 25 some odd intersections that will get entirely adaptive signals, new signal hardware, controllers, and other associated improvements that'll make those corridors run a lot smoother. If you have more technical questions, <laughs> Tom can Tom can get into those, um, but, but I know that's a huge component to this, this TMP and this partnership. Coupled with that, um, Oak Hill. Oak Hill's the, the busiest uh, intersection in town. Um, and there's, so signal improvements will be made there. Safety improvements will be made there. Access management improvements will be made there. So that's, that intersection will be improved and will implement many of the things the town's been studying for a number of years and, and hasn't had the, the funding entirely to, to execute those. So that'll be accomplished in the second year of this three-year plan. So that would be in 23. Um, we're also paying safety impact fees for other intersections and locations that we're not making improvements that DOT then collects and then works with the town on executing. And the last two uh, key kind of buckets are pedestrian connections. So not only making the downs walkable, but making um, access and pedestrian accommodations walkable around it. So route one will have new sidewalks uh, on both sides of the project. We're gonna provide a key connection over to the municipal campus, which is really desirable to get where we are here, connected with the downs more directly for walkers and bikers. Um, and then a key connection up to Cabela's, um, working with the Beacon. And I know you're working with the Beacon right now on an application. So that's kind of a key partnership to make that uh, linkage happen. And then lastly, transit. Um, so we're already, funding or helping fund Zoom um, serve the project. So phase one already has transit service. We put in a bus shelter and we've, we're actually paying a fee every year so that they serve the downs. We wanna build on that. Um, so to continue that relationship and grow transit, we're partnering on funding a study to really uh, figure out how transit can be grown to the downs, to Oak Hill, to Scarborough. Um, where riders are coming from, where they want to go, so that um, we can work with the transit agencies and the town can work with the transit agencies to really make a robust transit system uh, with the project and to serve this area. And so with that, as that happens, we'll make additional uh, transit stops near and within the project. That's part of the, the program. <clears throat> so I guess just to kind of wrap up, um, from a key program element standpoint, and Rocky will have a couple of final remarks. 
all of the town DOT partnership improvements, they're all gonna happen in the next three years. Um, so we have five years to do all of the things in the TMP, but the majority are in the next three years and all of the ones that the impact fees a partner and, and the DPI is a partner happen in the next three years, um, 22 through 24. All those improvements also are geared to happen before there's kind of substantive impacts from the project. I mean, so far we've had light industrial and residential uses. We have signalized intersections that already can accommodate those. As development occurs, we're gonna be doing the improvements before you know, bigger impacts happen. As Rocky mentioned earlier, it's really key to understand and for the public to understand that these improvements are funded by the project there also would be through the impact fee system funded by past development projects or future um, where they paid a fee to the town. Um, so, and those fees, you know, need to go to those specific improvements. They're not um, for other activities. And, and then of course, the $3 million from DOT through the, the partnership. The TMP includes, um, I guess I lost my place. It's okay. I was doing so well. Yeah, that's, it's good. I just wanted to repeat sort of the five-year uh, forecasts. So the TMP includes enough kind of traffic and accommodation and solves the impacts for our forecasted build out over the next five years. Um, one key component of that is we need to do these improvements every year, regardless of pace of development. So if nothing happens, we have to do them. If uh, a fair amount happens, we have to do them. So having predictability in terms of how we build out, you know, both residentially and commercially is really important to kind of marry up with funding the project. Um, because if the project can't proceed at a, you know, sort of forecasted pace, then there isn't the, the private dollars to, to fund those improvements. So there's a linkage between kind of build out of the project and actually making these large improvements. Um, I guess the other key piece is like, okay, how do we keep track? Like, how do we know you're still within your permit or, you know, how much traffic is being generated? We've been working with, with Jay and Angela and their team already on like a scorecard. So as a project comes in, reviewed by the planning board, they keep track. Okay, they use 10 trips, they use 20 trips so that we can't go past what we're approved for, um, you know, without uh, working with DOT in the town. So it's closely monitored in terms of the traffic that is added to the system um, and us complying with the permit. So I wanted the council to be aware of that too. It's not a willy nilly thing. And if we have, as we approach, okay, your, you know, your trips are, are, are satisfied or used up with the TMP, we have to apply to DOT. You know, should we ever get to that point, say five, six, seven years for a modification. And then that's, then they look at new impacts. So I just wanted the council to be aware there's a good tracking system in place uh, in terms of compliance. Um, so with that, I, uh, hopefully that gives you a good sense of the program, what's included, um, sort of the importance of the, the partnership and, and I'll let you Rocky kind of wrap up sure. and go sure. from there. Thanks Dan. Go to the next one, Paul. Oop, one too far. What are you looking for? The trips. Number of Which trips? Tracking. Yep. About 3,000. 3,000. Yep. So, uh, you know, this, this program really allows uh, all of the goals of all three parties to get executed. Um, you know, the Downs, the Town, and the DOT. Again, it's about a $14 million uh, dollar amount for, the, for everything that we're talking about doing. Um, it gets the main DOT to commit to a $3 million uh, uh, put in towards it, about a million bucks a year. They'll do a million a year over three years. Uh, that's their BPI program. Um, that's, that's a big deal for the citizens of the town of Scarborough to get $3 million from the state um, and to get the benefit of that. Um, the town, we need the town to you know, commit those impact fees uh, to, to allow us to, to make these uh, Make these improvements in those various districts, um, and that's really our ask of the council tonight. Uh, you knew there had to be an ask when we when we came to talk about this, but basically, it's a pretty should be a pretty easy lift, I would think, that these are monies that have been collected over time from developers for improvements, and we we'll take that money, put it together with ours and, and the state, and and we can really make some uh, 
really big improvements. So we're funding the rest of the, of the balance on that. We need an MOU. We've got to have an understanding uh, in writing so that we can move forward. It's pretty important to, uh, to, to have that in writing so that we all know who's doing what and how we move forward, uh, move this project forward. But um, it's a, it's, Pretty exciting. Uh, I don't know that there are a lot of towns around in, in Maine that have the opportunity to really, really look at traffic and really make serious improvements and not cost the, the, the citizens any money. So with that, uh, I think Jay's got some uh, slides that he wants to do. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll hold off questions until Jay's done and then we'll take it from there. So you can actually just skip right to the next slide there. Um, so, you know, as we talked about this, as I talked about the workshop with Tom, what we thought would be helpful is just we knowing that the request of council is to really take a, a look at our traffic impact fees is just do a, a broad overview of what our traffic impact fees are. Um, so sort of just, you know, uh, real briefly, the purpose of, of traffic impact fees is really to address traffic deficiencies in town. And so the states established this tool for towns to use whereby we can impose impact fees on new developments. Those fees are paid by the developer based on their impacts, you know, they're sort of calculated through um, different design programming. And then those funds are put into reserve accounts for specific improvements. Um, as was already just sort of talked about, you know, the downs is of a different size and magnitude than anything that was contemplated when our impact fees went in. Um, that in the early discussions with the DOT, you know, there is pretty clear that mitigation, actual construction by the downs team was going to be required and that just payment to the impact fees wasn't going to be sufficient. Um, so uh, next slide, just give you a brief overview of where these impact fees are. We really have four different areas that we um, collect from. <laughs> Uh, so you can see three of them are right along the Route 1 corridor. Um, one's at Oak Hill. Um, the next one is Highgus High Parkway, uh, Route 1 intersection, and then further on down at the Dun Dunstan Corner. Um, and then the fourth is the Payne Road uh, impact fee area, and I actually break that one down a little bit further in a few slides. But the next slide... Um, so I'm just gonna bang out two of these real quick, Dunstan and Highgus Parkway. Those improvements have been done. Really what we're collecting the fees for now are going back to pay the town's debt service. The Downs does have a little bit of mitigation they need to do at the Highgus, um, but by and large, their, their impacts uh, are being mitigated by paying back the town for the improvements that are already done. Um, so we can go to the next slide. And this is where the partnerships really starts to come um, to fruition here. Um, so I mentioned I was going to go over the uh, Payne Road uh, district. So there, there are four current districts. There used to be five. Um, sorry, Tom, I didn't get to color code this map. I didn't I ran out of time this afternoon. But um, you can see the, five, the, the four existing districts. District one is really up there at the South Portland line, really runs from South Portland line to about the 295 uh, overpass. District 2, 295 to just about past Gorham Road. District 3, Gorham Road down to essentially the Holmes Downs intersection. And then I'll skip to District 5, which runs us west of the Turnpike up through North Scarborough. District 4, as you can see on there, was really uh, was around the Eight Corners intersection area. Um, and that was uh, repealed in 2011 because the town actually activated the impact fee funds and was able to complete the project that was contemplated. We haven't yet been able to do that in these other five districts, and that's why they're still active after 30 years. Um, typically, you don't have traffic impact fees uh, for 30 years, but here we are, and this is an opportunity for the town to, to make um, some actions that we haven't been able to in the past. Um, if you go to the next slide, see what I, oh, okay, get in. Um, so we've already touched on a number of these things that the downs is going to be required to make improvements and that this is an opportunity to leverage um, the existing town reserve funds. So you can see what those fund numbers are here. I do just want to point out for District 5, um, again, that was the one that runs from the Turnpike out to North Scarborough. And really, as we talked about, that overlap of, of 114 and 22 is a major problem area. There's a current uh, $920,000 CIP that was in the FY20 uh, calendar year. Construction is uh, planned for that in 2023. And this has been really part of that 
uh, collaboration that we've talked about. Actually, I'll talk about it in a couple slides. Um, so that though it talks about there being 1.2 million, just remember that includes the 900,000 that is already accounted for. Um, so really, as you can see at the bottom bullet there, the ask is really gonna be to commit roughly 1.5 million or so of the, from the reserve accounts um, when, you, when you total them up. Um, so the next slide, just uh, briefly on Oak Hill. Um, again, the, the current account sits at, uh, I'll say 400 you know, uh, $450,000 roughly. Um, again, that includes the CIP that was actually just improved as part of this uh, budget cycle. Um, for adaptive traffic signals. So, um, you know, there's roughly $96,000 that are un unaccounted for, if you will, um, in, in that. So that'll be part of the part of the discussion. Yes, Don. So Jay, are those the traffic, mm -hmm. uh, adaptive traffic uh, devices similar to the ones that were installed in Dunstan? Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so last slide, really just to sort of touch on, you know, We've already heard some of the benefits really about leveraging our existing um, reserve accounts um, to make these longstanding improvements. There's actually been sort of past um, projects that have put forward by the town that haven't been able to, um, to occur in some of these districts just due to the lack of funding. So this is an opportunity um, to, to, to maximize there. Other things that we found uh, that, that this you know, uh, partnership has enabled is really to minimize disruption, uh, traffic disruption due to construction sequencing. I was referencing um, uh, the North Scarborough project, really looking, trying, you know, we've been looking at the five-year program that the DOT has been putting together in terms of what the offsite improvements are gonna be yeah. and sort of the three parties have talked about what's the right timing. Um, and sequencing of those things so that we don't go in and do a project and then another year later they come in and do a project and now we've messed up North Scarborough for two seasons instead of just one season. Um, uh, talked about leveraging DOT funding. Uh, the other thing that uh, we started to uh, collaborate a little bit on is their opportunities um, for efficiencies and project administration, you know, um, and so I think there's ways that that, that will help sort of uh, all parties. And then my last bullet here is really to foreshadow beyond the MOU and, and other things, but this is an opportunity for the town. I talked about the, the Payne Road ordinance being 30 years old. Really, we can take a, have an opportunity once we make these improvements to take a, a bit of a step back and look at, okay, you know, where, where are other areas in town that we have problems? What type of modern design and cost analysis should we have for those? Um, and really, you know, might lend to us in the next year or over the next year or, or so, looking at updating those ordinances as really a key component to our growth management. So um, I just wanted to sort of foreshadow that because um, I think that is something that will be coming down the road to you. But again, tonight, I know we're here to talk about sort of the little, little closer in. So that's all I have. Thank you, Jay, much appreciated. Peter, do we have an electric copy of this? Can, if so, can we, to distribute it publicly or because it's just it's very easy to digest or? Electric copy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, with that, I think we'll just, if the councilor wants the floor, you can keep the floor until your thread is over, so to speak. Councilor Caterina. Oh, I have a few questions. <laughs> um, I live, as you know, on Gorham Road, so I'm in that. Came Road uh, District, and I've noted a couple of things. I noted on this map here down below, it says additional mitigation, and it says Gorham Laurel Ridge to New Road 25,809. So I'm curious what that is. This is in this box down here. I'm looking at the small print. <laughs> so that's a. Sorry. Well, that's um, one of the DOT safety impact fees we were talking about. That I know, but is that money that's going to be expended? It's going to go to DOT, and I think they kind of collect, kind of like we do our multimodal, they collect throughout the state and use for site safety improvements. So they're, um, so they're planning on, no, they aren't planning to do anything between Laurel and New Road. 
They should. Right? They should, and yes. they know that it's an issue, and then they prioritize them throughout the state. Okay. And as they get to it, they get to it, I think is kind of how that works. And the reason I ask that is because obviously we have the Red Brook watershed right there. Mm -hmm. Particularly, it's right next to the road in that area. So, you know, I was just curious about that. And then, um, and I kind of chuckled, Jay, when you're talking about, oh, you know, DOT, we don't want to be doing something and then DOT and wants to mess it all up a year later. Has anyone talked to Maine Turnpike about the bypass? So, because that's coming up through and it's my understanding that they've secured almost all of the land that they need. So. Yeah, uh, Tom, I, we, Tom and I recently had a meeting with DOT and I mean, I'm MTA. sorry, MTA. I was MTA. Gonna say, um, yeah. And so the timing on that project still unclear to us, um, but it is coming. It sounds like it's coming anyway. Um, I've been it, hearing it just, that for 30 it, more right. years. It, but, that's yeah. sort of why I'm, that's why you hear right. the hesitation in my voice is the conversations are happening. It sounds right. like there's activity, but I've heard from you, G. Marie, and others out in North Scarborough when we've had the meetings in the past years that, oh, we've been hearing that for 30 years. It sounds to me as though things are moving. Yes, it, that's, that's what but, I've been told. But so, so, um, so I, but I don't want to give false hope either because it's not our problem. Right, but my, my question guess, is, yep. I'm sorry to interrupt, nope. but my question is just so you don't have to. Mm -hmm. My question is Has anyone included MTA yes. and made sure that they aren't then going to come through and say, Oh, well, you know, that traffic pattern that's going because we're doing this, that, or the other thing? So the I bypass. guess I was just going to offer that that's where I sort of head is MTA okay. has, has been aware of this process and DOT invites them to the meetings. They've been at at least one or two of the meetings in this process. So they are aware of okay. what's happening. Um, oh, all right, those are my curiosity questions. And I will say that the, the mitigation when we were looking at North Scarborough and the planning of that was really about optimizing what's there rather than expanding the lanes, knowing that we're, we're hoping that the bypass is coming so that um, really making it as efficient as possible um, without blowing out into a six lane highway, right? Sure. Well, right, because I, I know at one point they were talking about making Gorm Road into a four lane right. road, and I'm like, I don't think so. So really looking at, we really honed in the design to look at the footprint that's there and just really maximizing the efficiency through the signals in the system. And that's where the down comes in too with a couple of those legs and adaptive traffic signals as well out there. So. Um, that'll be key. Okay. And that's certainly been a message that's been relayed to the MTA mm -hmm. is that the desire for having the, you know, if this were to go through, that it's not going to change the character of North Scarborough. And, right. Yeah, that we, yeah. Okay. Okay. Johnson's floor. Yeah, that was a lot of numbers. The, uh, it was a great overview. Do we, are we going to get a copy of that? Because I don't see that in the packet. The uh, yeah, it, it was just it was emailed to me while we're in executive okay. session. Okay, because I'm going to have to go back and read that and, and yeah. digest that. But I, I got hung up on something. The the partnership was this always a partnership, or is that what this ask is for the partnership to absorb our uh, traffic impact fees? I think it's always been assumed that the town was going to use those impact fees to make improvements. And I think the issue has always been that they didn't really have enough money to go make a big impact. They've been collecting some money, they get a little right. bit of money, but so our assumption has always been that the town was going to do something. We know we have to do something. Let's work together, put our money together and really make some serious improvements. When through this process, my take on it is the DOT stepped up and said, we have a program that we can assist with some of this stuff because we know there are these ongoing problems that have been in town for a number of years and we'd like to help fix those. Yep. So, so they're contributing like $3 million or they're, something they're, like that, right? they're willing to contribute. They have a program where they can contribute a million, a million a year for three years. Yep. The, the BPI part of it is the platform that puts all three entities together is the, that's the partnership. Okay. Just, and again, I'm, I'm dense at times, so I'm just trying to understand. I, I 
No, DOT yeah. comes up. I know. <laughs> Careful. Yeah. That's true. You, sure you just got set up. <laughs> yeah. I just got set up. Yeah. <laughs> so the overall cost of these impacts, that 11 to $13 million, where does that come from? Where does that come from DOT or is that the assessment of all the... So that dollar amount is our best guess at this point in time of what we think it will cost when, when it gets done. Okay. So the do where the dollars come from, we know that the town has somewhere around a couple million. I'm not, we'll, we'll have to figure that out um, that they've collected from developers that could go towards these, these improvements. The state has said, we'll go three, three million. million. We've got to pick up the tab on the rest. Okay. So the and, and again, the just, trying to wrap my head around it. So if you didn't absorb our impact fees, then you would still be uh, responsible for the difference. Is that correct? We would be responsible for certain, for certain improvements, but we aren't responsible to make the improvements that the town should have made. Well, we've already paid in that, Kenneth, and we look at that, that yeah. two points. You want it back, I get that, yeah, no. So we're not gonna pay twice just to cut to the chase. So. Right. I don't want to get set up or anything. No, and, and again, I, I just got hung up on it because so, and I don't know if this is the place to have the discussion. I heard this was the ask of the council. So in the discussions between our, our, our engineers and our planning, where does the, the directive of what monies are allocated to what projects, who's responsible for that? Again, giving up $2 million theoretically in impact fees that we had complete control over. And I'm sure we have a plan in the planning and through engineering over time that we were going to do, you know, improve sidewalks and crosswalks and lighting systems. But if we go into a pool of money like this on a bigger project, who then is, who, who directs where the money goes? Well, the, the law requires that impact fees are specific to certain improvements. And so uh, impact fees vary in terms of their per trip uh, cost. Yep. And that's based on the type of improvement required and the cost of that improvement. It's all boiled down to a per trip fee that's assessed. Right. So it's very granular in that regard. So we call it an assumption or an ask. The law requires that we use those funds for the intended purpose for which we collected them. We have no... Yep. But I mean, we, we could have, in the plan, could have had a, a plan to expand a sidewalk somewhere. Okay, that could have been our plan. Theoretically, we hypothetical. What, what and now we're we doing... relinquish that. Is that correct? So, but, but, but you're talking in the hypothetical. We don't, let's say we don't have that because we well, don't. That's why I asked. What we're doing is in accordance with what we've been collecting the funds for. The reason we haven't put them to use to date is either we haven't had enough or the timing hasn't been right. And this really gives us a chance to leverage other resources to, to do bigger projects, uh, including what we're committed to do already. So uh, this isn't just an ask from them, this is a recommendation from staff as well. Right. And DOT frankly says, town, you've been sitting on this money for 30 years in some cases, you need to put it into play. Right. So uh, and I think we're on borrowed time, to be honest, if I can be frank with you. I, I really think this is the time for us to use it and an opportunity for us to really get smarter about what the next evolution of impact yep. fees are in this town. Jay, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I just want to, um, and what I was hearing in the question, and, and forgive me if this wasn't part of it, but uh, just to be clear, within the traffic movement permit, it lays out what the, the, um, what the improvements are, and there's actual conceptual plans. So a good example, if we talk about uh, Payne Road District 3, there's some 600,000, let's just, uh, that's one of our bigger ones, bigger nut. Um, what what, what the ask is, what the requirement is, I'll start there, the downs is to rebuild the Muzzy and Payne Road intersection, put in signals, uh, potentially traffic islands, and there's a, some concept plans around that which stuff. Which is something we wanted to do. Anyway. Which is something we wanted to do anyway. That project probably costs a million and a half. I, I don't know, again, we have 600,000, so it, that, that's yeah. sort of the partnership piece. Okay. Um, so what I was hearing one of the questions was, well, how do we know what the improvements are? The improvements are spelled out what year, and there's conceptual designs that show um, what's okay. to be built. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any more? <clears throat> Thanks. I, I wanted to follow up on a couple of questions that uh, Councillor Johnson asked. Uh, 
and this is great that we're getting this kind of all, uh, you know, in one place and we're kind of seeing uh, that a lot of this work has been been done already. And I think, uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of yammering about permits and uh, growth management ordinance and that sort of thing. And I think when sometimes when we're involved in work like that, we forget the fact that there's been this huge body of work that's been going that we've seen for the first time. So thanks to everybody for bringing that forward and getting it on the board. Uh, I, I think that Councilor Johnson and Jean Marie have done a good job of saying, so So now what are our next steps? So I, I know we this is supposed to be the, the tee off a shot here for the for the MOU. So I, I was wondering if we could just talk about that for a minute in terms of what, what we expect that would include and how specific can we get? So I know we floated some broad numbers around, but it would be you know, maybe helpful to hear yeah. from Tom on that and others. I, again, no one's put pen to paper. I'm not seeing a draft of the MOU, but in my... My expectation is uh, essentially what's going to happen is within days or a couple of weeks, the Downs team is going to have to sign their TMP, which effectively legally and financially commits them to all of those improvements. Understandably, uh, there's other partners that have been part of this conversation and are part of the solution. And so for their comfort, they need the assurance before they, I'm not sure if they do it before they commit, that the partners will step up the plate and do what they, you know, they say. So, I think an MOU is the right instrument to kind of lay out the, the, the expectations of parties. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but a, uh, I think I can say safely that an MOU is not a contract, but I think it does, particularly when you're involving two state entities, uh, two public entities, state and town, uh, that we are mutually laying out our expectations, our commitments. Um, there's a next level of effort required for council to actually authorize those funds. And I've done the conversation with our finance chair as to what that is. I don't think it needs, it can be in the MOU, but at some point the council will actually have to act to authorize the use of those funds. So I do anticipate subsequent actions of council will be very specific, um, but we need an MOU to kind of hold this thing together. So everyone has a clear understanding of day one. Thanks, Tom. I had uh, two other questions. One is a follow up to that. So, if you were to point us in the direction of where the one to three million is right now in our budget, now where would we look for that? Would it be in a reserve fund? Is it a, yeah, they're in separate reserve fund funds. balance, or what would it be? They're in separate reserve funds. They would actually show in the audit in uh, a, a, I think, one of the restricted categories of uh, our fund balance. Uh, so, it's reported as part of that. But um, yeah, it's, it's separate and apart. On occasion, you'll see them come through the CIP process, uh, like North Scarborough, um, like Oak Hill most recently this year, uh, but they sit separately in reserve in the reserve account are, and, and that's because they are limited in terms of what their use is. We cannot use them for general fund purposes. Right, offset right. of the cost. Thank you. And the last question, maybe this is above the rim for us, certainly is for me, but uh, any stimulus money for this or any infrastructure money? I don't know where the status of that is federally, but uh, this yeah, does but seem to be something that would would be logical to ask that question. Yeah, based on my analysis so far with guidance provided by Treasury uh, regarding the ARPA funds, uh, those are really focused uh, on water, sewer, and broadband exclusively. Um, having said that, there is a, a fairly large infrastructure bill apparently making its way through the Congress. Um, you know, I I don't know how how that may affect. Uh, it's quite quite likely that it could benefit one or more of these projects. Great, Great. thanks. Thanks, Tom. Council Anderson, the floor is yours. Yeah. So I just have a question. Just make sure your mic's on, John. Because the, the numbers, I was just trying to follow. So the ask is for, for 2.8. And then I thought what I understood, Jay, from what you presented, we have about 1.5 million and reserves and that would be what we would be putting in the mou from one of the slides you shared i i think yeah. the downs is including the project that was approved we've already authorized that we already authorized okay. so i think that they're including sorry i'm interrupting but just because i had the same question two years ago we improved the 900. yes so they're lumping that in so i think in our brain we're looking at 1.5 and, and this year we approved what 365 yes so if, if i could jump in so you know take that project that's already been approved and they know what they're they're doing well, well we'll look at that our team will look at that together and say well 
they're going to do this much. We ought to do this much too. We can put that together. And maybe that's a town from Scarborough project that, that we don't, we just pay. We don't actually do it. Maybe the town does it. We don't know. We haven't figured that all out yet. That's what, that's kind of the ask. We're not asking for $2.8 million. We're asking for you to authorize your staff to work with us to come up with a memorandum of understanding of who's going to do what and how, how it should flow. It's essentially the balance of the reserve accounts for the four Payne Road districts and Oak Hill, accepting what's already been authorized and appropriated by council. And so there are no other major transportation projects where we could be using these funds that are in the CIP or? So, so as was talked about earlier, really we're restricted into where these funds can be expended. Mm -hmm. They can only be expended in those areas. So. Um, this is, as I sort of said, this sort of sets up our next opportunity to start looking at, okay, where are other challenges in town that are, you know, um, you know, each, each incremental development sort of has, you know, adds to the problem and, and maybe we can come up with a design that really um, aims to solve that and maybe address our ordinances towards those problems where we've corrected things that have been pending for a while. So like that, just one kind of point on when DOT identified the mitigation for the project, um, a number of the locations that are in the town's impact fee system, those improvements were identified in part because they haven't been done yet. So DIT, DOT is approving TMPs historically, people are paying impact fees for Main Road and Muzzy. DOT is expecting that to be done. The town hasn't collected enough money to actually make that improvement. So we're required to make that improvement in part because of the impacts, in part because the improvement hasn't been made yet mm -hmm. by the town. So I think there's a direct connection to the required mitigation with the town's impact fee districts because some things haven't been done. There's some pent up yeah, for sure. Yeah, the other thing that might help you, I, I had a conversation with, with Steve Landry, he's the state traffic engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of the top dog in this conversation. Uh, the way he said it to me that made some sense, uh, when they approve a TMP and under a conventional sense, I think Dan said it best, a project comes forward, it says, here it is, here's the impact. And there's a permit that's based on what that impact is. When the next developer comes in, the assumption is that that improvement that's required with the one that just came before them is made. And so the conversation builds on that. And what happens if those improvements aren't made, uh, it becomes a, a real challenge. And DOT is the one being the permit authority, uh, really trying to reckon with whose responsibility is what. And so the beauty of this is it in a fairly concise, finite period of time, it gives everyone assurance that this work will get done uh, rather than trying to chase and understand who, who did what when. And if I can expand on that, it puts that burden on the dams. So we have to get the, these projects done in the time frame that we've agreed to get them done. Truth be known, these gentlemen would rather pay impact fees, write a check and walk away, <laughs> or pay as they go. I mean, I think that would be your preference and I sure. would understand that. So this whole approach I think was met with some resistance initially and understandably because of the magnitude and, uh, and kind of buying this credit that they can work against. Uh, so it's gonna make their so approvals process hopefully much easier because they're going to have a bank to work against. We work together uh, and it's best in, in basically cut as good, as good a deal as we feel we can with the DOT. I mean, but we're committed. We have a five-year plan that there are things that have to be done in each of those five years and it's up to us to get them done. And if they don't get done, it's going to be on us. And, and, uh, so it's, it's a big commitment. Uh, the town can kind of come along with us. We work together. And we get more bang for the buck, if you will, uh, for the town. Yeah, the bigger the job, the likelihood we can get it done less expensive. It's everybody's money. It's true. And the other, the other, the other comment I have is when you think about this BPI program and in the in the partnership and the MOU and so on, you know, paying traffic impact fees, you can see what it's done. Nothing. The money's been sitting around. In a, in a lot of ways. I take exception to that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we did, we, 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 first time. we did um, uh, Dunstan and we, we've done Haggis Parkway. So there's examples of us being correct. There are areas for 30 years Tom, yep. that haven't been addressed because the, the it's not, it's not the, the town or the staff's issue. It's the 
the quarter and there wasn't enough funding to right. deal with what needed to be dealt with. Yep. This is like the unlock mechanism to it. So my point to you is, I think one of the considerations as you look at new platforms going forward after this is in place and we get like this major unlocking completed of traffic mitigation, you might look at a different mechanism than traffic impact fees that actually uh, the citizens of the town can realize the impact from quicker. So it doesn't kind of get locked away. Um, just something mm -hmm. to think about. I think there's great comfort on our side to, to tie development and, and uh, responsibility for impact uh, to, to addressing that. And then I think, um, Maybe bring it in a little tighter. With, with Peter loves there. to give advice on how to run the government. I'm going to say some things are very obvious. <laughs> <all the time. laughs> Hold on, Mr. Anderson yeah. still has the floor. So I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to bring this back in, John. I just want just clarity on my question. Um, so if we have 1.5 million in the current reserve pool, you know, I just want clarity. There aren't other projects that we would want to use that 1.5 million for, or do we know what those projects are? Because I would just want to make sure if there are other ones that we're just making sure these are really the, the right ones where we want to apply those funds. They seem like it off of what I understand so far. So I just want to confirm there is not other things. I think there's been two years of, <laughs> of study and our engineers meeting with the Downs team engineers, if not at time at times for months at a time weekly. Other times it's every, but there's been a lot of a lot of time spent in looking. And so I think at this point, yeah, staff, I would say um, what it has helped us do because this is especially the Payne Road districts are are um, aged as they are and trying to reestablish what those traffic impact fees were based on. What this process has allowed us to do is really look at the analysis when their traffic engineers really diving in to see what are the real issues out there currently plus moving forward as they increase traffic and you know in these already failing intersections, to be honest. And so when you look at it that way, I think this has kind of opened our eyes as well to see, and we've worked together, as he said, I've met with the traffic and we were meeting every week at one point, um, really kind of diving into that analysis and those study, the study, the numbers extent to figure out and prioritize what needs to happen in these districts. Okay. No, I just want to say yesterday when I drove to the Downs uh, off of Payne, I was like, this isn't going to work in long term. <laughs> so it's good to hear that you guys are thinking about it, especially that must-see intersection. Um, when, you, when you guys talk a little bit about the five-year projections that you were <clears throat> kind of designing this, is it just considering what's going to be happening in the Downs or is it was it considering the growth in Scarborough overall? So the TMP process and and Tom can jump in here too, um, is cumulative. So you, when you do a traffic study, you add in all the other proposed developments, some of that's happened, some of it hasn't, to those numbers. Okay. So it adds in other development activity in, in the project, excuse me, in the town and also in the region. Um, so it's not just the downs. And, so it's okay. yeah. and there's also, if I'm not mistaken, there's also an escalator that DOT puts in. Mm -hmm. And so it looks out in the future and says, hey, in, in the year 2030, let's add 5% or 10% mm -hmm. of the background traffic. So there, all that all that is being looked at and considered as part so of it. You, you apply a background growth rate that's based upon, you know, something approaching volumes of certain number of years and then adding in that funding development those are approved projects and there are a number of projects that we've added into the study you know because of the activity in Scarborough is substantial in terms of the number of background development trips are at. Mm -hmm. That's great. And Payne Road is going to be in the first year. So okay. 22 years. <laughs> there we go. To answer your first question. Yeah. <laughs> all right that's that's all I had. Thank you. Karen Sigleistein. So I, th I think you said around 14 million overall. It was, and so it'll be like a list of projects and then 14 million. If it goes over, how does that work? Do you have to remove projects out or do you you have to put more in to finish the project? So do you agree to that list? And we agree to that list. No matter what? Okay. We agree to that list. So, so those are just costs the go up. 
those are mm -hmm. just the cost estimates for the list. The list, once it's, so it's just, the, it's ultimately gonna be the cost of that list, not, that's our estimate. It could be 15 million, could be- Yeah, the, commi the commitment is to the work. To right. the work. It's to the work. It's to work. Okay. It's to work. Um, and so are you the only group that's, or the only developer in town that's ever had to do one of these TMPs for Scarborough? Is this? No, there have been other TMPs issued, but okay. this is the largest. No, not The largest. Specific, okay. Certainly. It's the biggest one. Okay. And I, and I wouldn't say that, you know, there's never been any kind of a partnership with the town before. Mm -hmm. I'm sure so it's, it's gone on, but this is, this is kind of a unique opportunity you know, right. to mm -hmm. leverage the money that you've collected right. with our money, with state money. Right. And really make an impact. So much work has gone into it. This, this, uh, <laughs> there's about a, about a billion dollars worth of engineering work yeah. in uh, two years. Seriously. Yeah, I, I do. I do want to jump in there. We we have spent over a million right. a day just to get here and have this conversation. Um, I just hope there's a level of appreciation for that because this is major. So how does it work with so like another major development like? Eastern Village, like they're obviously contributing a lot of traffic to Black Point Road, which is another really bad part of town, right? So, <clears throat> so they're not, just they don't participate in this, just traffic impact fees they have, or so, so does this does the state not go? So what about the other major developers in town? So yeah, right? maybe I can, you know, um, Eastern Village is a good example. They have their own traffic um, uh, movement permit from the DOT that was secured, you know, what, 14 years ago at this point. And there are mitigation requirements um, in their project. By and large, they probably did pay impact fees to the, the four main areas, but then they had other offsite. Um, largely what we see with, with traffic movement projects, they're at a scale that really most of the offsite improvements they make are really almost front door improvements. It's a left turn lane to get into the site. Um, you don't, I haven't seen, I don't think anyone's ever seen the scope that we're seeing here with, with, the, with the Downs project. Um, so um, I think the um, Enterprise Business Park, though I wasn't around when it got approved, I think you know they had to do a number of improvements as well as pay traffic impact fees. So it happens, Rarely that a project does both. I think Cabela's or, or um, uh, yeah, Cabela's is another good example where they both had to make some improvements, but also have to pay some impact fees. You don't see it too often, um, and the improvements that they made were at a smaller scale than here. You know where we're talking about completely redoing Muzzy Road and Payne um, intersection with it. You know that's. That's not just a little bit of geometry. <laughs> um, right. So, so I, I hope guess, I'm answering your question. Yeah, you are. I just was, because this the ordinance is so old, we yes. define these districts. I mean, I'm just wondering, have we missed opportunities by not so uh, it, keeping abreast of that? I mean, obviously you came along and you fell right in the square middle of that district. And so you were impacted by it, but were there other parts of town that we should have been? So I do think, you know, that, I think that raises a good point with the Payne Road being, you know, from 1990, that actually set up these districts that were linear and it didn't necessarily have defined project where I think what, you know, Tom referenced earlier how, well, we, we've done things at Dunstan and Payne Road. Well, those were more modern ordinances that had as part of that ordinance, this is what we're going to build. And we knew what that cost estimate was. Um, so I think that, you know, sort of as Peter was alluding to before, as the town moves forward, we need to maybe get away from the pain road model or just say, hey, we're going to collect money and do something <laughs> where we actually yeah. <laughs> where we actually design what that thing is right. and build yeah. towards that. So I think that's this is uh, the horse, you know, the cart behind the horse, but it's innovative when you look at it, like what's come out of this is quite innovative with these projects that you're coming up with. And then this is what the town can do. This is what but it does kind of feel like maybe we've lost some opportunity, you know, for some of these other big developments that are really impacting other, other parts of town. But yeah, I was just going to also add um, that one of the other differences is we work with the town on a five to 10 year TMP. That's, that's really uncommon. Typically it's, I'm going to be at build Cabela's. It generates, you know, 500 trips. Mm -hmm. I know what the improvements are. Cabela's pays for it. It happens. So 
that's also the scope of the improvements is kind of the life of the permit. Um, so I, I think that's important for the kind of the town to understand because we could have come one at a time and be piecemeal, but it wouldn't have resulted in this partnership opportunity and fixing right. town issues, DOT issues, and ours. So and it's kind of a catch-22. It it's a like benefit, but it's also a... <clears throat> Yeah. You know, so like to have that communicated out through some channels, maybe a simpler, I mean, not that this wasn't simple, but fewer bullet points, I guess, you know, that people can understand like what this is and looks like because traffic is, um, is a huge concern. And, you know, here's, like you say, a five to 10 year approach. Now, things could happen. Maybe it doesn't work the way you're saying, but you've made this really good point about the scorecard because you can't always predict the future, but as this happens, this happens, there's built-in mechanisms to kind of do that. So I do think that the communication out about what this is to the general public would be of great value should the MOU go forward. Because um, it seems very innovative to me. Yeah, I think we've, we've put together a plan of what we, you know, the engineers have said, this is what you need to do to accommodate this much traffic. And so, we're going to make those improvements. We get to put this much traffic in, and then there'll be another bite at the apple. This, these trips are going to be, you know, that should take care of us for a significant portion of the project, but it's probably not the whole, it's not all of it. So there's going to be another bite at the apple at some point in time, but we've come up with a plan that seems like it would be manageable and it seems like it would make sense rather than come in like Dan said piecemeal. Oh, we have a user and we know it's this many trips and we need to go, you know, make a lane on. Pain right. road, and then next year we have another user, and oh, now we need something else on Pain Road. We're back in Pain Road again. It's right. let's let's figure out what we think we need for the near future and make those improvements. And then go yeah, forward. and honestly, like like you said, Dan, like especially at North Scarborough, I mean, now you're impacting the whole region, and Pain Road going to South Portland. It's it's not just Scarborough residents. It's going to be people coming down to. You know, so um, it seems like a, a great approach and it's just, it's clear how much work, how much work has been. I'd always hear about those meetings and occasionally step in for a minute or listen at the door, but I was like, oh, wow, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Do you have anything? Yeah. Um, so, uh, there's some really great improvements here. This is you know, a lot of work that's gone into it. And I've heard about the, the famous meetings for hours on end as well. Yeah. Um, I'm happy that I didn't participate in any of them. Yeah. Um, you know, technically, I understand the need for an MOU. It might be more complicated. It, it could be complicated. So I, I guess a couple of questions might help to clarify. So where we've made improvements already, like in Dunstan and the Hagus intersection, are, are they paying impact fees to, to reimburse us? For these other areas where we have defined impact fees, are they going to we're going to waive the fee because they're making the improvement, or how's that going to work? So, in the Payne Road Ordinance, the Planning Board is has the authority to um, allow construction in lieu of payment, and so that is a discussion that we need to now have with the Planning Board moving forward, and and you know talk about that role. So there is still another discussion to be had with with that's their review authority in the ordinance um to date be, really the the tm this traffic movement permit and the reason we're here tonight has really come together two years sort of funneled together really quick and we're almost to the the final you know it sounds like dot is really close to signing the permit um so we're we're starting after this meeting we're going to try to pull together the planning board to have that discussion around Okay, this is all the work that's gone into it. Here's staff's recommendation that we move forward with uh, construction in lieu of payment, and um, ultimately the planning board will have to take that action or the action they see fit, I should say. And then the other, on the other side of that, let's say a big user comes in on the other side of Payne Road. Um, typically, we'd have them pay the impact fee to the town to reimburse us for the improvements that were made. Since the Downs is making the improvements, what happens to that money, or do we even still have the impact fees? So I think that's something that we need to work our way through. I think we are going to need some legal advice on how we 
sort of wind up closing out ordinances and or, or modifying them as we look at new areas. So that's going to take a little bit of time. One thing I've thought about, and you know, this is going to be some of the mechanics that we need to sit around the table with Tom and, and the Downs team to talk about is, but certainly, you know, as they said, in the next three years, we're going to see most improvements. We'll probably see some funds trickle in in the next three years, right? We're a busy town. Um, you know, what, what's going to happen with those funds that do come in, right? Because really they're, they're targeted for these improvements. And so is it, you know, do we talk, we need to talk about that. Yeah. I don't want to, um, and, and, and to, to John's point, we did seriously, all we're trying to avoid is paying it twice. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. It's the, you know, one. So that's a one. key point of, of the yeah, MOU absolutely. is absolutely. we're going to get absolved or, or yeah. mm -hmm. from these. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Good. Uh, I, I think I'm going to ask the same thing for the third time, but do we have like, so we have a pain road uh, zone three. Yep. Do we have a pain road zone three traffic improvement account? Yes. Okay. So I think that might help a little bit. So there is a designated, so, so those there are many different reserve accounts yes. that are very specific. Yep. So, when, so to John's, I, I'm re-asking your question, John and Ken, but I think I'm trying to get to the same point. So when we look at pain road zone three, there's an account assigned to pain road zone three. Yep. Okay. So we segregated those accounts. So when, okay, so when there's the question is, is there other priorities? Well, there's an account that can only go to pain road zone three. Right. Okay. In, in that slide that I had that okay. spelled out. Yeah. The yeah, that's, I, I just felt like yep. people were trying to get to that. And we didn't quite get there. So I think you're right. It's like it only added Yeah, right, that's right. But I think it's, well, I think it's important to understand, yeah. even if there was some yeah. intersection that we wish we could spend 2 million on, we can only spend pain road zone for money on pain road zone. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, to Betsy's point, wholeheartedly agree. This is this should be something that is probably celebrated. So it's important the, the way that we uh, communicate it out to people, right? Because there's seven of us. I, we just need to make it clear. Uh, that was it. Because I think that that eliminated my follow up question. So that's all I have. Does anybody want the floor back? I just want to ask one clarifying point, I, Dan. In your presentation, you showed uh, what you call the front doors, uh, in particular um, Route One. Holmes Road and what will be Center Street, I think you called it, on the highest parkway. Yes. Those are all improvements that are not part of this TMP. Is that correct? They're part. Of, they're all part of the TMP. Yeah. Are they in that fourteen million? Yes. They are. Okay. I just want to be clear on that point. Yep. I just have one. Yeah, absolutely. One yeah. comment slash recommendation, and it's probably already on your guys' radar. But are you going to be talking about this with the downtown? development committee at all just to kind of help them understand how this this particular plan is going to be critical as an enabler to kind of get the downtown we want so that could be included in their recommendation to the, to the council because I think like we talked about yesterday there are some needs for the, the the committee to identify things that the council might need to consider in order to enable the downtown that's being painted and it was a great meeting yesterday where you guys showed it, but I think that's kind of the next step is, what are the things the council needs to consider to help enable what that team is gonna be recommending? And I think this is probably yeah, one of those things. Agreed. On that point, um, we, we did invite planning board members and transportation committee members. Mm -hmm. We made them aware of this meeting. Uh, I see a couple of them are here in the audience. Some others may be watching. Um, yeah, you know, really just to get as you Hi, said, Steve. there's a number, <laughs> there's a number of folks in town that have other, yeah. you know, responsibilities in, in this um, in, at play mm -hmm. here. So um, really, this is a great opportunity to start that conversation now that we have something to present and it, it, it is becoming very clear. Um, and as you know, um, we've talked about it with transportation groups. So we're really talking about dovetailing that in with the planning board workshops um, because that group will be kind of the eyes on this as well, yeah. how that moves forward. Um, just kind of helping along with that process. I think that might give the council some comfort with that as well. So I do have a logistical question. Uh, so the scorecard, so how literally is that counted and marked? So, somebody you run over a, a cord that does a car no. axle count or laser pointers uh, or sorry it's based on the number of trips for each use is based on um the ite manual and tom can explain <laughs> the ite manual but it's a you know a single family home 
right? So what's it? So no, it's know. based on it's based on. Tom, why don't you explain it? The, so, so traffic engineers have the um, publication, the IT Trip Generation Manual, mm -hmm. and so it's a big publication based upon research on developments throughout the country that basically tells us how many vehicles are generated from different land use categories for projects, and it's approved by DOT town uses it, and so you're. We'll work with your consultant, traffic peer review consultant, and we'll come up with, and as each time the site plan application comes before the town, we fill in the scorecard to say, to keep track and reduce the, the trips that have been permitted from, you know, you know, you know, from that estimate, right? Just keep keeping track of, of So essentially they start with 3,000 and they work down from there, right? Okay. First project takes 45, next as one takes, right. You know, we come so, in, we get some condominiums approved, that's this many trips. We get a, you know, a commercial building approved and it's this type of use and it's that many trips. We just keep, keep that. And it's going. created by engineers, so it's highly conservative. You never actually <laughs> generate the traffic, it says. So if you're worried about that, it's going to be... Says a planner. Plus 20%. <laughs> plus 20%. <laughs> well, I guess my question is back to the town. And, you know, how yep, how so, are we going to prove out that this is... Yep, so as part of the mechanics, as was just said, Every application comes in with that scorecard. Our, with every application, we send out to our traffic peer reviewers. So um, we, have, we have folks on our team that this is what they do. They look at that scorecard and we'll say, uh, nope, we don't like that number, or yes, that number works fine. And there's a lot of back and forth that happens. And um, once that number is agreed to, Jamel in my office, the assistant planner, tracks that and he has that scorecard ready to pull out at any moment to say where are we against the 3000 and within a few moments he can say yep we're at 500 so, so, how, do you, so how do you look because i know yeah. i heard you guys talk about like you like how so the traffic system you put in at dunson how's that working and you made some adjustments to it because mm -hmm. there were some things that weren't quite working with it so how do you how do you determine when you need to make adjustments on these smart systems and how are you measuring once you're in, in action, everything is live, you've done all the work, you've had all the planning scorecard, what, what does the town do then? So if you're talking about just the adaptive traffic signals system yeah, in general? Just the, it looks like a lot of this plan is yep. dependent on this, yep. right? So we're not making a ton of road improvements. Right, right. It's so about it's keeping we're the- highly banking yep. on this. So how, how are we gonna monitor that once it's up and running? Right, so um, with each improvement too, and as these traffic signals are upgraded, there is some back and forth again with the their design engineers as well as our peer reviewers that would be out in the field to make sure it's it's kind of working. Also, mm -hmm. we have um, a maintenance sort of contract, I guess you'd call it, with um, rhythm engineering is the adaptive traffic signal we, system we use in Dunstan, which is what we're going to be rolling out to be consistent throughout <coughs> the town. Um, so there have been extremely responsive with okay. all of those little things. Um, when we get calls or complaints, or we can actually see them live in real time okay. from public works to say, okay, this isn't working and why, and we can really literally pick up the phone and be able to adjust those things from Kansas, okay. right? So um, I think there is some back and forth about just getting the system off and running, which um, would be their traffic engineer, Tom right. and Goral Palmer. Um, to try to, and working with our peer reviewers to get that going. But long term, we also have a system in place. Councilor Gleistein, we actually track, we have metrics that track the optimization so we can tell you what percent improvement we've seen at Dunstan. I mean, I can like, give you my personal anecdotal experience because I go through there four times a day. Um, but then I can't quote them off the top of my head, but it was in the order of 20% they were showing, at, yeah, for reducing delays through that intersection. Yeah. So I would expect we would generate similar metrics um, as we roll out this technology elsewhere. So it's good to get, yeah, that background information first, that the data collecting of what they collect that on what happens with that and, corridor before and after. Yeah, yeah I, I uh, drive that intersection every day. So I'm just, you know, add to the qualitative responses there. So it does seem vastly improved. Uh, and I think that's the same uh, method we're gonna use at Oak Hill. So, I mean, those things really do work, so. The, the most notable improvement is, and it, maybe it's just my pet peeve, but I hate sitting at a traffic light, uh, you know, particularly when all four intersections or, or approaches are stopped looking at each other. Um, the one thing that you'll see just going through Dunstan is it is responsive. They will adjust to what is coming at it, and it's, it's remarkably responsive. 
I, I think that. I think I'm concerned. Why are you making four trips a day? One to the office, <laughs> one back. Slight <laughs> <laughs> <Quite> exaggeration. <laughs> I, I go home to lunch every day. So it's actually, it's actually six times through if you want to be accurate. Uh, After an hour and a half, I get pretty useless. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's like, you... So they're gonna make just for clarity, they're gonna make the improvements, but we all know. Right, so the public works will see what's happening in all of these two sections as well. And if it breaks, we're, we'll be on. The and I will say, we've been part of those conversations with um, DOT. We've been at the table, so really through um, the town has been specifying what equipment we want. Like to the point of, we did our research ahead of time in selecting the adaptive traffic signal. We did, um, and now we are all in and, and seeing the results that we want to be consistent through the town. And so we're actually um, been specifying what we want for equipment and it's getting in through the DOT and into their TMP. The one exception, and it's a little off topic, but uh, exit 42, I believe MTA showed yes. a very keen interest in actually taking over ownership and operation, given the fact that queuing from their traffic coming off the turnpike being stopped at that first light is backing up through the toll and up to the ramp. So am I correct in saying that, Angela, that they're interested in assuming ownership? Uh, they, they do have ownership of that intersection. But yes. that was fairly recent. It was it? recent, yes. Yeah. Yep. And we were and pleased so, to give yeah. it to them. They put the maintenance yes. responsibility <laughs> to them. Um, and then I guess the other thing is looking forward, this is great, it's a nice summary. I understand there's another level down that has you know more specific layers as part of the, uh, the it'd be good to make that public yes yeah. uh, when at some point we're going to have to authorize the use of funds we're going to have to make sure that they relate to the projects or that they were collected for so just be good to yeah. be able to tie those together mm -hmm. yeah I, I next order of business i'm going to work with allison and uh, come up with a whole communications plan because uh, i think there's a great story to tell and a lot of detail to synthesize and convey but there's also a long-term education. Um, you know, these improvements are sustained over a five-year period. So ideally we coordinate and are thoughtful when and where we do these improvements, uh, but there's gonna be a lasting impact that people see. And I think the sooner we talk about that to prepare people what's coming at them, uh, the better. I think I'd, I'd add that, you know, there's a level of detail there, but we don't have actual detailed plans for every single thing that's gonna get done. We've got plans that are, correct me if I'm wrong, they're, they're pretty close. They're generally what's gonna get done. That's what these descriptions are. But as we move to those projects, the year before we're gonna do that project, we actually get into you know, build documents. And that's when we're gonna to continue to work with the town, work with the DOT. And you know, our plan might've said, the, you know, the, the, the lane is gonna be 37 feet long and we've realized you know, it needs to be 41. Well, those are, gonna, those are gonna get changed in detail. So there'll be, you've got a level of detail now, but it's not super deep, mm -hmm. but that will come as, as each project comes. I, I don't think the council would need the final build plans. Um, I, I think it, we just need to be able yeah. to say that they're gonna be used for the purpose for which mm -hmm. they were collected. Yeah. You're appropriating funds, yeah. essentially. Yeah. That's what we're. We're, we think we're asking for it. And I think once, as the, as the, once the DOT does finalize that permit, now we know what the, that five-year schedule is, that the great information for, for not only share with council, mm -hmm. but for, for members of the public so they can know. It, it's spelled out. These guys are on the hook for it, sort of regardless of what happens. And it's um, a, this is a significant yeah. amount of work that's going to get done over the first three years. And it, it, frankly, it'll be a little unpleasant around the downs for for a little while, but you know, once we get that work done, particularly Payne Road, and there's a lot of work that's gonna get done there. Once we get that done, you get it all done one shot. You know, it's not us doing some, the town do some, we do it all one shot. We all go through the pain of getting it done, and then when it's done, Payne Road gets slow. Yeah, aptly <laughs> named, <laughs> Payne Road. Drop the Y, all right. It's gonna be a lot safer. Yes. Hey, I'm excited about Route 1. Uh, you know, there's yeah. some changes yeah. here that uh, have been studied for years and years. And, uh, yeah, it's going to make a, an impact. Council, I think. So, Jay, oh, sorry. do you anticipate that there's any of these projects? Because I'm thinking back to the, um, you know, we put the, uh, we closed the road going up to Dunson Corner, and there was a, a big outcry by, uh, you know, uh, to Fillery uh, Farm, and you know how that all worked out, and the town worked together to come up with a different plan that that actually got executed. Do you anticipate any? 
controversy on any of the ones that you're that you're looking at that you know that residents might have good ideas that they want to share and say wait if you do this it's going to work better or I mean I know there's been two years of work so I'm just wondering you know and will they have a chance to weigh in that planning board or how does that work because I, I think that I think if I'm, I'm not maybe not saying that one correctly but I believe there was a general um, consensus that that ultimately worked better with public feedback the way that that whole three light thing worked um, maybe that was one of your maybe we're still here at the end but I can anticipate the Mussey Road, Payne Road will be of some interest just because it's going to be brand new. It's a brand new intersection. I, I anticipate most of the other ones are really kind of improvements with extra turn lanes and those sorts of things. So the average resident probably won't have much of an opinion. The experience won't be that different. Uh, having said that, the Oak Hill improvements are likely to be the most um, challenging for us right. because these are really focusing on safety improvements. They'll be very... Um, you know, raised islands, they'll be- Yeah, raised they'll be, islands on black yeah, yeah, yeah. turn lane or? Uh, I don't, I can't say that, I don't believe so, but I, I think historically that has been an area that a lot of people have opinions about. So I think we'll be wise to um, be thoughtful about how we roll that out. Um, I don't think we have much opportunity for changing what the improvements are, frankly. They're really being directed by D, uh, DOT, very specifically. Yeah, and I think, Tom, that Oak Hill is a, just a good example of sort of the collaboration that's happened with um, with DOT, because that, that's one of our busiest intersections, we all know, but it's also one of the, the uh, our high crash locations. And so DOT was looking at using, you've probably seen them in other communities, um, sort of these plastic tubular um, materials down Black Point Road. And that was going to be what the uh, traffic um, was intended to, to enhance safety. It being Oak Hill in the center of town, you know, we sort of looked at that and said, oh my goodness, we can't have plastic tubes that are going to get knocked over and be broken all the time. And so now the plans sort of morph to more what we see at, say, Haggis and, and Route One, you know, where you have the, the sort of low curbs, that, um, something a little bit more attractive, mm -hmm. but still does the same safety parameters. But as Tom said, there's, you know, DOT has it's said this is a safety issue. Oh, you you you've got to you, you've got to make some improvements here, um, and so we were able to at least move it to something a little bit more tenable to what we think is more tenable to the residents, um, but but certainly. Um, so anyway, that's just an example. All right, it's eight o'clock. So I think I think um, we're going to wrap it up. If anytime you get a group of people that have spent hundreds of hours on one thing, another group of people that have been spending <laughs> lots of hours on something completely different, we ran the risk of probably everything going haywire. Thank everybody in the room for very productive, respectful conversation. Uh, and with that, we will see everybody uh, in a couple of weeks. Actually, we'll see us back next Wednesday. Next week. Thank you. The 30th.